Hello everyone and welcome to another video here today. We are actually covering a Tia player with Amir. How you doing today, Amir? I'm doing pretty good. Getting to watch Tia, a character that uh, is somewhat in my wheelhouse while I am an artist. Oh. Um, she is very fun to watch, but I, I've had an issue with Tia for a while um, where a lot of people may not know this, but previously... In uh, I think it was before the game fully released, Tia's color combinations didn't make the right colors. Um, so her yellow blue did not make green, and that had been a big drive for me to never play her. But they did change it, uh, I forget what season, but ever since then, the character's been fun to play, fun to watch. It's uh, a so, nice time getting this year here. So your biggest problem was that she wasn't coloring properly. The color painting yes. was the proper. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Nothing about the gameplay. Just uh, her colors. Nothing about the character. Yeah. Okay. Just gotcha. A colorblind artist seemed to be on the island for a bit too long. Okay. Noted. Noted. Yeah. So with Tia here, I mean, I think this character is incredibly powerful right now. Is able to do so much. But she can seem quite confusing. So we'll try to go over a little bit of the basics here for everyone who doesn't know exactly how Tia works to kind of give you an understanding. So first things first, we'll talk about her Q. So her Q actually has three different ways of how it works based on what color that she has going. So the first one is yellow. And you can see there, you can switch between those colors on her bar next to her HP. Uh, the yellow one makes her toss the paint tube in a target direction, which explodes in a cone, dealing damage and slowing enemies. Her red color allows her to swing the paintbrush in front of her, so in a frontal cone in melee range, uh, dealing damage and slowing enemies. And then the blue version it allows her to slam the paintbrush down on the ground, dealing damage. And hitting an enemy in the inner range also deals additional damage. This one also slows. So all of her Q abilities do slow to a varying degree. Her second skill, Palette Swap, allows her to swap between these colors. So at any point in time, you can actively swap between yellow, red, and blue. For her third skill, it is a dash of color. This is just her mobility button. It doesn't matter what color you have. All that matters is that it'll do the same dash. It'll just paint a different color depending on which one you use when you press your E ability. Lastly is your is your full rainbow. So Tia paints a target location, dealing damage to enemies and stunning them. And if the enemy was already painted with a color, so if you hit them with any of your other abilities, uh, the stun duration is actually increased to be even longer. Now the now the confusing part about Tia. This this is the part that really can take a little bit to fully understand. So her passive is color mixing. So using your different colors here will cause different effects. So we've got three different forms of chipmunks. The first one is mad chipmunk. So this is yellow plus red. This will silence an enemy dealing skill damage over time. Then you have blessed chipmunk, which is red and blue. So this here deals skill damage, healing Tia for the damage dealt and increasing her movement speed. So really good sustain tool. And lastly, the most probably common one I feel, this one gets done a lot, is blue plus yellow, which creates magic chipmunk, which will damage the enemy and root them, which is your usual try and true combo. I'm sure we'll see that happen quite a bit into this game. Yeah, Tia color combos is, I think, what draws a lot of people away from playing her, because you have to go from just thinking about how her individual abilities work to... How do these abilities work together? And it becomes kind of overwhelming if you uh, are trying to main her. But if you can get her down, I've seen a lot of players do some insane things with this character. No, exactly. I mean, I've seen insane things done with this character. I've seen insane damage from this character. This is a character that if you land your pains properly, you can basically one-shot combo players. So I won't be surprised if we see a full true combo from it. But it's really understanding your color mixing, right? It's the, the ability combination isn't too bad. It's pretty straightforward, but it's knowing what colors to swap to at what times to get to guarantee that you land those appropriate paintings. Yeah, and as we did see earlier, yeah, hit the yellow on the uh, Isaac as he was running around. And then when Isaac was actually in range for blue, he hit the blue and it just meant that now Isaac can't chase anymore rooted 
but we're gonna see yellow into blue again for the root one more time i think maybe hitting yellow into blue here as well oh we actually hit the yellow into or yellow and red silencing him and now yeah we're just hitting him with whatever paints we can as i think we're just looking for the kill yeah it doesn't plus... really matter what we do as long as we hit them all no exactly plus i think yellow red i think is the most damage that you can do if i recall or it might be um, it might be red blue but one of those two is the most damage you can do a lot of times you end up actually seeing blue yellow for the fact that it will it'll root the target which lets you do your true combo with with your ultimate but yeah a lot of times i uh, wouldn't be surprised like i think the dot damage from yellow red is the most damage that you can do yeah i think it was also buff there you go um tia numbers wise um makes a lot of people scratch their heads wondering how this character is ever balanced as she has some of the highest amp ratios in the game um where her color combinations are doing like 200 300 percent amp but it's all because while other mages are casting all of their abilities multiple times over and over again tia's casting two abilities to deal nearly the same amount of damage that other mages are doing but it's just that you have this re now requirement of i have to hit these two abilities and um after playing a bit of tia this character is not the easiest to hit your abilities on no for sure the other factor too to that amir is that tia doesn't benefit from cooldown reduction if i recall correctly instead she actually gains amp based on how much cooldown reduction she has so that also helps scale her into more damage output. Yeah, it's a very weird but cool mechanic um, where her QW and I think her ult don't actually care about cooldown reduction. Or sorry, no, I think it's her QW and E, but her ult does get affected by cooldown reduction, um, which is... I, I don't understand the interaction too much. Um, it's how Nimble Neuron wants to balance her. Yeah, um, it, it's mostly working off her paints is, is my understanding, right? It's because you yeah. can't press Q. Once you run out of your paints, you can't press your Q ability. And I also believe you can't press your E ability until your paint refills up. So that is yeah. essentially her cooldown. So cooldown reduction doesn't matter at that point. Um, and from what I remember, Tia's red paint is the one that recharges the fastest, um, which is why a lot of players really like the combo of yellow and blue plus red E, um, as yellow blue sets you up for that root, and then you're allowed to use red E because uh, your red paint will recharge anyways. It doesn't take too much longer after. Gotcha. Yeah, and the other thing too here is if you're wondering if there's any way to help improve your paint refilling it's maxing up w after once you once you start leveling up w that will be what actually gives you uh faster recharging on those paints yeah but i think we will hopefully be seeing a bit of a fight come up here as we have two teams we fighting for this tree and i'd really like to see maybe a just yellow blue into alt out of nowhere because that's one of the combos that Tia is really known for. Just finding this yellow into blue, catching a full team out, full team stun, maybe even looking for that E in to get that bat skill right after and setting her team up just to win the game off of that combo. Absolutely. It is definitely a big enjoyment when I do get to see a beautiful Tia combo come in because it is very satisfactory for sure. But I mean, right now we're kind of in the lol moment. But I definitely want to see some more Priya uh, Tia action. Yeah, Priya. <laughs> I almost just called it Priya. I I don't know what's with today. I am. Uh, <laughs> it is Tia action. But yeah, I mean we're already almost full build. I mean Tia here running a pretty cheap build with the blood cloak and nightmare nails. Yeah, very cost effective items where we're getting a lot of amp and we're also slotting in some cooldown reduction with our weapon and our arm piece which are benefiting us for more amp because they give us cooldown reduction and cooldown reduction is also converted into amp. For sure, maybe we might see some action here. We can see the pings from each other, but no, we're gonna we're still gonna just uh, 
Boy teams, here comes the TP going in back yeah, into forest. A... Okay, I was gonna say it's a bit of a risky TP as TPing day three and onward it becomes a bit scarier because one of our people go down, then now we have to spend 250 on them. But this team already has control of forest. They already knew that no one was in it, had cams here as well. So it's less risky. Yeah, a little less risky. Although it didn't really get us near any objective. Luckily, there was no objective spawning yet. So we kind of just knew that we were falling behind a team. The team was already clearing out farm ahead of us. So we kind of just went backwards to try and see maybe this side of the map is a little bit more clear for us. Yeah, and I wonder if we'll be seeing that forest core come out for the boots as we don't need heal cut. So we don't need the mithril. Um, but we might see some... Actually, I don't think we need the glacials either because we're already 30% CDR. Maybe her. And I'm not actually sure about the conversion on bonus CDR. But yeah, I'm assuming the Hermes are coming out. I mean, it would make sense. I mean, we're already running a tanky leg piece. Tia may be somewhat of a ranged character, but does genuinely play very close to melee. So being a little bit extra tanky definitely does not hurt. As we did actually see the Tia just getting, uh, <laughs> yeah, getting oh. jumped here again. Just sadly, no matter your character, no matter how tanky you are uh taking eye of bullets does hurt your health bar <laughs> no for sure now again that that is the thing right you know we got the eod boots for that reason trying to keep ourselves you know what somewhat more durable than others but even then he is still a squishy mage so when you get caught out like that it can be very deadly yeah because a lot of people probably have the experience of oh tia hit me with blue and now she hit me with yellow from across the map and now I lose the game, where Tia's blue is still, while it's not melee range, it is still, uh, it's not an actual ranged character. And yes, her yellow does hit from pretty far away, but it's also not the easiest skill shot to hit. Um, and maybe I'm just spreading Tia propaganda, but I think this character is pretty hard to play because of how hard it is to hit some of these skill shots, as we even hit the yellow blue ult, but sadly, the, I think it was two-handed sword skill came out. Yeah, parry we was a little too anything. OP. Yeah, How unfortunate. But, yeah, we get to see the combo come out. Does not fully connect as they just deny it. But looking for things like that, where we just walk up, hit yellow, hit blue, and then look for the alt. Just, it's such long CC, especially against characters that really need that mobility because roots deny them the ability to use it, and we stun them right after. And if you're fast enough, then you can also use the uh, your E to dash in and look for that bat skill into a wall. But uh, that's a lot riskier of a combo for, I want to say, Tia professionals. No, for, for sure. But I mean, again, it's like, it's looking for that fish of always trying to fish for uh, yellow here. We can constantly see our Tia's going to yellow to check for bushes. It's the longest range. It is what allows her to play like a range character. It's the follow-up of blue after that's always so tricky. Kind of like you mentioned, you know, it's such a short stubby range. And, oh, oh that, there's, there's... The, uh, grab from this Darko. I think we sadly missed the blue because of it, but it doesn't really matter because we're able to hit blue as she's trying to go over the wall and she's put on the floor now. Nah, that was a little... I think the Darko did actually prevent us from getting the combo, but we saw it there. I mean, the Tia did not hesitate. The second that the yellow hit, they were already blinking in, going in for that full combo, even using the ultimate. Like, the ultimate was out instantly. It was just full confidence send on the buttons. Wasn't even registering that the Darko had sent them backwards instead. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest things on Tia is always just having this confidence to throw throw this ultimate once you hit your combo or once you really believe this combo is going to hit because if you wait a bit too long then it does give your opponent the opportunity to, opportunity to react um so just make sure that you can get this out especially against a character like Thistle where she can press that w and negate a lot of damage if she gets that frame to react just make sure you get it out make sure you hit everything and uh put her on the floor no, for sure. Again, Tia is a burst mage, try and true at the end of the day. So you need to be making sure that you're confident in your true combos. That hes hesitation will definitely allow enemies to be able to get away from it. 
Yeah, but we did see uh, Artia grabbed a Mithril. I, I'm not exactly sure where she had got it earlier, um, but one of her teammates had dropped a Mithril, and she had dropped it over for her, I think, uh, Alex pickup. Um, maybe the myth where, head? Yeah, I assume. Um, so, yeah, it does not look like we're actually going for any Myth Boots. Maybe we go Blood Shoes here. Um, Red Shoes sounds really good if she does. Yeah. Yeah, both it teammates are like saying no. <laughs> no one else wants it, so we might go Weapon here, actually. And then... Oh, no, we're just going to force our Darko. It's okay. Um, But, yeah, it, it looks like we probably are just looking for... Um, oh, actually, no, we're going Meteorite. Um... Oh, is it an Iron Maiden's then? Yeah, that's what it looked like here. Um, I mean, we are getting Armor Pen, which is beneficial to us a lot. Tia has a lot of damage coming out, and being able to negate any armor to any Squishy usually will guarantee that they are just one shot off of this combo. And we're getting Blood Weapon online as well. Yeah, it looks like uh, Darko actually built it for us. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, one thing, though, for sure in this kind of factor is, like, again, this build is so cost-effective. It really, really is super cheap for Tia. Yeah, but it looks like we're going to have a bit of an engage over here. Yuki is coming around from the corner, but I think our Tia noticed. Yeah, I think that blue into yellow, we know it's a two-handed char two sword character, though. Holding the ult for their D skill as it's the most likely response, because uh, no one wants to be sitting there rooted with a Tia around. But, yeah, I don't think that we were able to... Oh! oh we actually see is. That's the combo we like to see. Just, you see your opponents, use that blink, use that yellow, use that blue, get everything onto them, and just rip that ult right after. That is that is the disgusting combo, and it does so much damage. I'm She just single-handedly won that fight without her team. Yeah, I mean, that... Tia is a character with such high skill ceiling because of all of the ways that you can just win your team a fight but that skill floor is also very high because you have to understand what all of her paints do and the different ranges that you can play with each individual one when you need to be using which combo for what effect it it can start to hurt some people's head for sure i mean again especially doing that in the heat in the moment but muscle memory really helps it. Again, if you're going to learn Tia and you want to practice her, I think the most important thing to do is get your muscle memory comfortable with doing yellow, then like paint mix swapping to blue into blue hit, and then going in with your ultimate. If you know that true combo, you can pretty much get really far with Tia alone. Obviously she's got other combos. She's got other ways to play. There's a lot more uh, complexities to her. But if you start with that as your bread and butter, I think that's that's going to get you really far on T as a character. Yeah, and then another little tip for anyone that did want to pick the character up is that you should get used to pressing W after each ability cast. Um, or at least after each Q cast, uh, specifically. Because while it does auto-switch for you, if you wait, I think it's 1 second or 0.75 seconds, um... But if you want to be doing a lot of this, like a lot of the faster stuff where you are kind of comboing out and winning your team the fight, you need to be getting your other ability off nearly right after. And yeah, usually you'll see a Tia press abil an ability and while the ability is still in animation, they'll be switching to the next color. And it's just, it's important to get that, as you said, muscle memory in uh, intact because if you get to the to the higher stages of the game and you start having to fight players that will react a bit better to it, you need to be able to kind of surprise them with this next color coming out before they even realize it. Yeah, the other problem though about that is, is that if you wait too long, if you're not fast enough on the press of the swap, you might end up swapping two colors because <laughs> you'll press your ability, it'll auto swap, then you'll press the button and now you're on blue instead of red and that can completely throw you off your game if you're not familiar or comfortable with that yet. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it does help more than it hurts, but in those early stages, it'll, uh, it'll be a bit scary because you'll randomly just be two colors further. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely something that will hurt you in the beginning, help you in the long run kind of moments for sure. But we will hopefully see a final fight, or at least one of the final fights come out here because we do have a team that TP'd in and we're going to be bush cheesing. I'm going to hope a yellow into blue Oh, instantly. they're going to, yeah, they're going to get yellow blued here, even though they did get a recon happen. I'm, I'm so ready for a yellow blue full combo here. Waiting on a yellow to come back up. Getting a few more cams down though. There goes the blue, there goes the yellow, and there's the alt, and she's forced to blink out. We're just chilling now. We have so much control of the zone. As they uh they don't have blink, they did, they're Dolvia is trying to recharge that bike right now. And uh the other two are kinda scared to walk into Tia. I mean I I'd be scared to walk into Tia. Oh, great pulling though, just completely just stopping that. But the bat skill just keeps Sylvia off. They just can't get in. Everyone trying to prioritize the Tia, but I mean, they finally get it. But good good usage of like the knockback from bat skill to prevent them from getting that official dive in. Yeah, and I think we might have thought that uh, the yellow had, bit, had hit both the, I think it was Felix and the uh, Isaac. Because at least the way that the blue was thrown, it seemed like they thought, oh, I'll hit blue on both of my opponents. Neither of them will be able to react. But... I think we had only hit the yellow on Felix, so it had only rooted him. And uh, the Isaac was able to jump in, go for that grab. Almost ruined our fight, but yeah, as you called, that lucky, or I guess that skillful uh, bat skill, making sure that we're not being jumped by the Sylvia, not really being jumped by anyone after. So it helped a lot, that fight. No, exactly. I mean, again, really well played by the Isaac, completely canceling out our E dash. But at the end of the day, it worked out. And there's the blink of the blue bat skill into the root. And I think that's just, yeah, that's again, it's knowing you land the yellow and then going for that confirm kill on the blues is really crazy. That's another good use there, the full rainbow on top of it. I mean, Tia still goes down, but it doesn't matter at this point as it, it's 2v3 now. So it could have been 3v1, or sorry, 2v1. But that is it for this game. Again, really good prime examples of some of the colors of Tia. I recommend really checking into more detail about this game, guys, if you are interested in learning Tia. And I hope we see you in the next one.